Positively Nitty Podcast. My name is Nicole and today is Friday. I'm so happy because yesterday was Nick's first day of eighth grade. Um, this has been the first week that my husband has started back to work a full week, so that is a blessing. And Monday, Jason starts school. As about, And yesterday, um, Jason's younger brother, Dylan, who has been here since June, has gone home. He went home. And that was pretty sad because we love having Dylan. But he's been here since, yeah, the June and it's August. So I guess it was time for him to go home. So I am finding that I have time to podcast. I keep saying this, but I just never realized how much time having an extra body in the house takes up. And it takes up a whole lot, a lot, lot, lot of time. Well, I think it's because, number one, he's younger than my other two boys. For those of you that don't know, my son Nick is 12 and my son Jason is 14. Dylan is 6. So he does need me to still make him breakfast and all this stuff. And he is up under me a whole lot of the time. So... I just forgot how it was to have a six-year-old, because it's been a while, <laughs> in the house. Anywho, um, so yeah, right now Jason is um, at the park, and Stu's getting ready for work, and Nick is still at school, so I'm by myself, and I get to podcast. Woohoo! Okay, so I have been knitting, crocheting, quilt piecing, let's say quilting, piecing, I haven't started quilting yet. And sewing, so let us let me talk to you guys about all of that. First thing I want to share with you guys is um, a knitting disappointment. Okay, so about a month ago, I wanted a quick, easy project, a, a win-win. I wanted to make a pair of socks because I wanted to use some nice yarn, something that was going to make me feel good, but I wanted the socks to be quick. The pattern that I decided to use was the pom-pom pads by um, Wit. I think it's Whitney of the Pearl Bee. <sighs> okay, so basically, for those of you who don't know, the pom-pom heads are pretty much a footie. It's a pattern, a free pattern. It's available on Ravelry or the Pearl Bee website. Um, it's not a download, but the pattern is there, right? And wait a minute, let me grab the, the sock. So I've made a couple of these before. And I knew that they were a quick, speedy sock. I just wanted something to pick up and knit when I could and just feel like I was winning. So I decided to break out my Shibui yarn. I love this yarn. This is sock yarn, 100% merino um, wool. I love this colorway, and it's a number. I don't know what the number is because the tags are... Did I put the tags in my back? I did. Here it is right here. Ha-ha! So this one is... Oh, no, it has a number. Shibui Knit Staccato, it's, um, the color is called 50's Kitchen, which is pretty much appropriate because <laughs> I like that type of stuff. So, yeah. It is so, so, so pretty. The top is light blue colored, so this is the yarn, right? So that's the foot. The top, I use a contrasting yarn, and I use the Spud and Chloe Fine Sock Yarn in, what the color is this? And this is, this is the one with the number, in color number 7806. And this sock yarn is um, 248 yards, this is the very top one, 248 yards of 80% um, superwash wool and 20% silk. So I, I wanted to use both of those skeins because I love the colors together. I thought they complemented each other well. Now the Shibui is, I hope that's how you say it, is 65% um, superwash merino, 30% silk, and 5% nylon. This sock yarn costs $13.75. And if I remember correctly, the Spud and Chloe was running about $12. But this is like deep stash. I had this for a couple of years. And it was really good to just use it. I love, love, love this colorway. So I cast on and I was taking off. I did the short ribbing, which is perfect for me because I cannot stand to do ribbing on a sock. Um, and then I did a little cuff. You only do five rows until you get to like the meat of it, which is like the gusset and the heel flap and all that. So I did my five rows and I did my gusset and I turned my heel, everybody. I did all that. And then it dawned on me to check um, to see if I can fit the sock because I am um, making these socks on size two. 
knit picks, double pointed needles, right? Size two, and I cast on 60. What was I thinking? I, on a size one needle, I am like a 50 something, like 56, whichever one, let me see, 60 minus four, it's 56. I am a 56 on a size one needle. Why would I be a 60 on a size two? And when I cast it on, I just did not think that I would, I just didn't think about it. I just wanted to cast on something and this had to be it. This was it. And I didn't even think about, oh my, so wait, so uh, like something came on in my head that I was like, well, maybe you should check if you could even fit it because it's looking a little big. And yeah, you guys, I cannot fit this sock. Now, at the time, I was going to be very smart since I didn't like doing ribbing. I was going to be very smart. I thought that I was just too smart. I'm going to get this, right? I'm going to start on another pair of socks. And I used the Spud and Chloe for the, the, um, the ribbing. But then I used this Freckle Face Fiber Yarn. And this is a, um, this dyer no longer dyes yarn. This is a beautiful, beautiful colorway. I can't remember what color it is, but it's, this is super deep stash. This is one of the first skeins of real sock yarn that I purchased when I started knitting. And I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I knew that I loved it. I was thinking more of a shawl, but whatever. This is this is sock yarn. It might end up still being a shawl. It would be pretty as a daybreak. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Um, so I started two socks at the same time on the same size needle I cast on the same amount and so that means that both of my socks are way too big way too big so I have to rip them out I already took them off the needles and I'm not even sad about it I took them off the needles and I did not rip them out because I wanted to show you guys that you know mistakes happen everyone makes mistakes I don't care how far on in your knitting career you are, you know, mistakes happen. And this is a hobby. It's not a, for me. It's a hobby. It's not a job. You know, no one, it's not life or death. Um, no one's going to die because I made a mistake or these socks are too big or I'm not going to freeze. No one's going to freeze this winter because these socks won't be ready. So I am just going to rip them out because at the very end of the day, this project did serve its cause and that was purpose and it was just to make give me something quick to sit down and knit on because when I, i've been casting not casting i've been starting a whole lot of new projects and i haven't been successful at them but it is it just feels good to be able to sex to successfully do a knit stitch or a purl stitch or turn a heel or yeah or do an increase you know when i am trying to learn how to quilt and to sew and you know, the embroiderer and they're not looking great. It is good to, where I can sit down and just, knitting just feels like home. It always feels like home to me. So I'm going to tear those out and I'm going to just cast on some socks again. Okay. That's what I've been knitting. Crocheting. I have been crocheting everything. So I am still crocheting. I, I'm still, yeah, I am. I am crocheting, um, a granny square a week for as part of an app that was released by Red Heart and it's available for it's a free app you can get it on your iPad it's called granny square app um, and I downloaded it there on week 14 I think I maybe want I think it's 14 and I've done 13 so I'm always a week behind but the I know week 14's granny is like nothing so I am using various colors of Vanna's Choice yarn, and that yarn is an acrylic in worsted weight. Um, I am using a size G hook because that is what is recommended with the patterns. A lot of times in the patterns, I'm changing the very end rows because if I'm only doing four rows of a pattern and that's it. Some patterns have six rows, which is weird to me because if you're going to do a blanket, like it's going to be a pain trying to see, unless you're just doing random granny squares, it's going to be a pain trying to seam up, you know, different sizes, shapes of granny squares. So I'm making all of my granny squares four rows or four rounds. And yeah, so I'm, I'm still doing that, even though I'm behind. Granny squares are um, really easy to do. All you need to know how to do to make a granny square is to either chain or you can do the magic loop, which I, 
is easy to do. You can find tutorials, a ton of tutorials on how to do these things on YouTube or you can just Google it. And also there are um, tutorials even on Ravelry if you just look for them. Um, yeah, so you need to know how to chain or the magic loop. You need to know how to chain three. You need to know how to double crochet and to join. If you guys are getting lost, because I know when I started out making granny squares, I was getting lost at where to join and everything. So I began leaving stitch markers on my first, um, on my first, on my first double crochet and my last double crochet of each round so I know where I am. And I still do that on certain things that I crochet because sometimes I can't read it. Or sometimes I just don't want to have to count to 20 or something. You know, so. So yeah, these are all the squares. So I was thinking that um, I'm going to do a tradi traditional grannies and disper and put them in between these grannies just to make a blanket out of it. Because I was kind of over this project for a hot second. But then I decided to just chillax. I was... I was having a moment. <laughs> I knew I was. I was anxious about everything and I want everything to be done and but I just was so I didn't touch it. When I feel like I am crazy and all over the place, I the best thing for me is to absolutely do absolutely nothing. <laughs> just to be still. So yeah. So those are all the grand oh, there's one dropped. I'm gonna get it with my foot. <laughs> okay. So yeah. As far as crocheting goes too, I started um, another project. And the reason I started this project is because um, my sister's pregnant with her third kid. And uh, we found out that it's a girl. Yay! I'm, so, I'm surrounded by boys. So she wanted a boy. I wanted a girl. Honestly, I find a lot cuter things to knit buy, crochet, sew for girls. So I am super excited about having an, another niece to sew for, especially a baby one, right? Because when my, seven years ago, when my, my niece, Janai, was born, I wasn't really heavily, I wasn't as good as a knitter or crocheter, especially not even crocheting, but knitting, oh my God, no, as I am now. And there was the way that I could just whip up stuff. I was just barely learning. And now it's like, oh, this baby has to have all the things, even if I get mad at my sister sometimes. So um, I started making her a little blanket out of some yarn that I had from another project that's still going on. So this is worsted weight yarn. These are granny squares. This is just some Red Heart Super Saver yarn in the color baby pink. I cannot stand this yarn. I don't like Red Heart Super Saver. When I purchased the yarn, I thought that I was buying the Red Heart with love or the Red Heart soft. I didn't. I accidentally picked this one up because it was the color that I needed at the time and I can't stand it, but I cannot bring myself to just toss this yarn. So I am powering through a couple of grannies to make a blanket. So then I'm taking the grannies and I'm joining them with a granny square join. And this join I learned from, I took a class on Craftsy, and there's also a tutorial on how to join granny squares on, um, on Ravelry. And there is a book by Edie Ekman that shows you how to, gives you various um, joins for, joins and edges for your crocheted or even knitted projects. So now I started joining them yesterday last night and then it got into my head that oh my god I can make a letter out of this so what I'm going to do and I'm just joining them with a natural color acrylic yarn so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I finished doing as many as I needed for the letter and the baby's name is no I think the baby's name is going to be Elin so her name is going to start with an E because the dad's name starts with an E <laughs> sorry <laughs> Go ahead. It's an inside joke. I mean, seriously. Like, okay. 
If you knew. Those of you who know me, know my sister, know what I'm laughing at. So, okay. Anyway, the baby's name is going to start with an E. So, I'm going to make turn this into a letter E. And then I'm going to add various colors of um, solid blocks, granny square blocks around it. And I'm, she's going to have her little blanket. So, hopefully, that'll be done soon. And one more thing. Okay, you can stump down the stairs. Sue's going to stump me out the stairs. Whatever. Okay, so I joined a swap, another swap. I participated in a swap on the Banished Choice Fan Club <laughs> group on Ravelry last year, and it was very fun, and I made 12-inch blocks and swapped them out and got blocks, and it was really fun. I haven't done one this year, so um, there was a swap that came up with colors that I happen to like a lot. <laughs> And I joined the swap. I have to make 29 inch blocks to send to 12 or 13 people. And it's like, uh, but I have, I have from August through November to do it. So it, it can be done. And that is pretty much what's, um, what I'm crocheting. Now, um, as far as, oh no, I forgot one thing. Well, this is going to tie into what I'm sewing too. So, Jules Lunder of the Equal Opportunity Crafter podcast is having an apron along, apron sew along, which or a sew along. <laughs> she's having a sew along, and um, for the sew along, she's having us do aprons. I participated in it. Are you leaving? You okay. your glasses. Okay, we got glasses. That's all I'm saying about it. <laughs> Because we can't do PG it. PG now. It's, P it's PG now. That was PG. PG. PG 13. All right. <laughs> Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Have the bestest day ever. Are you bringing back more orange shoes? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. <sighs> okay. I joined a swap for the Vanish Choice fan club group on Ravelry. I joined one last year. That was my very first year of participating in the swap and it was such a fun experience. However, this year I have been too busy and I haven't had time to participate in the swaps. But I have been lurking in the group, right? So I knew that there was a second round of swaps coming up and they were showing the colors and there was voting and everything. So now we are into the second round of swaps and the first swap up was the one called Dessert, dessert Tones. Yeah, Dessert Tones, right? First of all, it says dessert. I like sweets, number one. Number two, I adore the colors. They are, the Venice Choice colors are... Um, lamb which i had to order because i could not find it anywhere around here and it, it was just cheaper to order it than to drive down to the next city that had them it wasn't even the next city over from us it was probably a half an hour drive no not even it's like an hour drive from here okay so i ordered that yarn so it's a lamb which is a neutrally babyish light light cream color very pretty um chocolate taupe Espresso, no, chocolate taupe, espresso is discontinued, so don't listen to me. And, and cranberry. All my colors. Totally my colors. Totally had to do it. And so I signed up for it. Now I have to make 29 inch squares for other people. And I have to have it done. All those squares done and mailed out by the by November. So I have a lot of time to do it and I can do it. But Yes, and there's another one that's coming up too, and it's like for Christmas, and it's so pretty. And I'm trying hard to resist, but oh, the colors. So go and check out the Vanish Choice fan club group. It is such a fun group. They are very active, and it's good. It's easy. You can lurk and get color inspiration and everything, right? Oh, okay. Now, as far as the crocheting goes, this ties into crocheting. I crocheted a dishcloth. Isn't it pretty? This is the Cherry Delicious, no, it's supposed to be a pot holder, but I made it into a dishcloth or a coaster, whatever. So this is the Cherry Delicious pot holder pattern. I made it in Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton yarn. I used a size yeah, H. I used a size H crochet hook. The pattern is available for um, 
it's free, it's a free pattern. You can download it. Um, you can't download it from Ravelry, but you can be directed to the site, and then they will. Um, you, then you can download it. So I did the. Uh, I didn't do the pot holder. I did it. Well, I. It's the same pattern. Instead of doing a pot holder, because I didn't think a pot holder would be kind of practical for the person that's getting this for her birthday present, I just did like a coaster slash dishcloth slash hand towel slash I don't care what you use it for, but I thought it was cute and it matched, right? And it says cherry delicious, but red was not going to go with the color scheme that I had going on for this birthday present. So I just used, I just went ahead, I took artistic license. And I uh, made the cherries blueberries, but I made the stem super long and I added a leaf and I put it to the side because I thought that'd be cuter just in case she wants to use it as a like a mug rug ish type of thing and sit her coffee or her drink here and then she can still see the cherries. Yeah. The reason I made the, the dishcloth or mug rug mug rug this color is because I joined the Equal Opportunity Crafters sew along and this sew along she's doing a, an apron or aprons which for me will probably be aprons with plural because I love to make aprons so I decided to make the very first apron that I made I wanted to make it again and um, you guys give me a second I'm gonna go get the first one that I made because it's I can see it Let me turn off this thing, my phone. I'm sorry, you guys. I have to leave it on because Jason is out of the house and Nick is at school and I have children and you guys know how it is. <laughs> so the very first apron that I made, and I made this with a sewing machine that was like kaputski and it was given to me by a friend. She let me use her sewing machine and it wasn't taken care of and it wasn't oiled, so it was very difficult. But I really had the urge to try and sew something. So, um, the first apron that I sold is called My Girlfriend's, I think it's called My Girlfriend's Apron. It's a free pattern. It's available from download. It's available for download from the You Can Make This website for totally, totally free. And, of course, I will have links to this in the show notes on the Positively Knitting Podcast group in Valerie. If you're, if you're a member, yay. If you're not a member, join. <laughs> or you don't have to no biggie we don't do much but we do stuff sometimes so this is the very first um apron that i sewed and this is out of fat quarters from joann's because <laughs> i wasn't investing in <laughs> in any um in any real fabric until i knew that i was going to be in i was going to be sewing and basically you use is it five, five or seven? Five to seven um, fat quarters, and you stack them and you cut them and you sew them. And it's a, it's not bad. But this was my first time for everything. This was my first time putting binding on this, and I love this apron. I just wore this apron for the first time a couple of days ago, so I have to make more because when I put it on, it made me feel so pretty. And there's nothing I like more. <laughs> than feeling pretty. I think the only thing that I like more than feeling pretty might be Krispy Kreme because I can be ugly and eat me some Krispy Kreme. Okay, okay, never mind. Oh, Krispy Kreme. Okay, so <laughs> I decided to revisit this pattern because I had a, a, you know, another year or two, another year of sewing experience under my belt and I wanted and a, a good sewing machine and I wanted to try to do the pattern again. And this time, I wanted to make it in the birthday girl's, I know I was going to give this as a present, and I wanted to make it in the birthday girl's favorite color, which is purple. Uh-huh. So this is my second take on the, um, my girlfriend's apron. And I like it a lot. I think it's so cute. I think the purple and the blues work out well, and it's really not showing up as vibrant as it is on the camera, but it's super duper 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 cute. This is the back. It is not reversible, but that's okay. And I didn't want to do anything like super frilly and fancy because I really want this apron to be 
used and worn and loved and used. Use it. <laughs> so on the pattern, um, it also gives you instructions for making a flower. So I made the matching flower and it, it says to leave the ends frayed because that's the look that they're going for. And I have still been sewing, hand sewing hexagons. And this is one of the hexagons that I sewed. So I just took it out and I put it on as the middle of the, um, uh, of the flower. To attach the flower, they say they suggest in the pattern that you use a snap pin. That way, you can attach the dishcloth to the to the apron and put the flower on and all that stuff. But I didn't want to get that involved. So what I did was I used a pin backing. Let me take it off. And that way, if the recipient wants to take it off, she can. And I just put a little felt on the back so I can make it so it could be so I can make it easier for myself to attach it to the pin backing. So I put the felt on the flower and then I took off because the pin backing already had a little flimsy sticky back and I knew that wasn't gonna work. So I just peeled the backing off and I hot glued the the felt to the metal part of the backing. Right? So yeah, so she's getting this, this, and the apron for a birthday present and it's going in the mail and my friend's birthday is on Saturday but she'll get it late because that's just how I roll. And I think that I'm going, and I put this on Instagram, if you guys want to follow what I'm doing just follow me on Instagram, I post, I try not to like post a ton, I don't post a ton, but I do post some of the things that I'm doing occasionally on Instagram. I did post this when I was done and even the process of it. Um, I am seriously thinking that I, number one, I'm going to make me one because I need more. Number two, I am going to make more of this and um, to make this cherry delicious pot holder. Didn't I tell you guys? I remember. You, all you need to know how to do is to cast on, to chain, not cast on, to chain, to um, single crochet, and pretty much to, um, that's it. That's just for the backing. For the cherries, you need to know how to, uh, chain and to uh, crochet in a circle but they give you directions for that and that's pretty easy and just use your stitch markers if you get lost for these I have to say that I just count it because it was so quick they also give you instructions for making a chain stem but I basically kind of sort of embroidered or surface crocheted the stem to the the dishcloth because I wasn't about to sit there and sew down a chain <laughs> I just wasn't <laughs> So yeah, so that's going to be mailed out, Stu's mailing it out tomorrow, so yeah. And, oh, <laughs> like, and what else, what else? Okay, yeah, this right back here, oops, something fell, there it goes. Okay, so, sorry you guys, um, this is going to be a twin size quilted um, throw or blanket, it's not a throw if it's twin size, is it? A twin size quilted blanket that I'm making for my son Nicholas. I had him go in my stash and I had him pick out the fabrics that he wanted me to make him a twin size um, blanket. And he picked these out. This fabric right here is um, something that he and Dylan and I were working on and we did this with Sharpies and um, alcohol rubbing alcohol and we and white fabric so we made or we pretty much made fabric so that went in too so I um, I let him pick out the fabrics of course I washed all my fabrics because I'm gonna wash this and then I just took this ruler right and I sat down and I cut out all these squares and then I went in and I just put them up in various different um, configurations <laughs> I just put them, okay, because this is kind of like a design wall-ish type of thing. And all this is are three pieces of different types of different different colored flannel that is pinned to my wall. I found a um, tutorial and instructions to make a design board. And I asked my husband to make the design board for me. He hasn't gotten it, gotten around to it, but he did help me put up the flannel. And the friction, I guess it's the friction, 
but the fabric it sticks to the flannel so you can sit down and sit back and see if you like the quilt in the way that it is in my head in my head my son would have been like okay mom i'm going to put the squares how i want them to go but he was he was pretty much like nope i'm not going to do that but i will pick out the fabric and so <laughs> that's he did pick out the fabric um this is um i think it's it's eight across by 15 down is it eight uh, yeah it's eight across by 15 down and yeah uh -huh. and i so i have to start piecing it together i'll probably start later on today because it's friday and i think this will be a fun thing to do when i was um cutting out the fabrics it i it just started some of the fabrics i have a lot extra on the side you guys can't see but it was getting a little too matchy matchy and a lot of the fabrics were just like uh, i needed just extra feel so my husband had a shirt which is right here. Oh, I guess you could go this way. My husband had a shirt, which is right here, and I was ironing his shirt for work, and I saw a stain, like, on his shirt, and that couldn't, it was ink, so there was no way, it was already set in, so there was no way that the stain was coming out, and I was kind of pissy about it, because, oh, gosh, right, so what I did was I was like, well, this is, instead of throwing it out or chucking it, I'm going to, um, use it and cut it up and use it for fabric so it matched pretty much the color scheme so i put it in and right next to it is one of my son's shirts from when he was small way small which is um it's it was not good enough it wasn't in a good enough condition to give to hand down to dylan but and it's way too big for too big way too little for him to use so i cut that up too and i used it in his quilt and this one right here has it's it's the pocket so hopefully I've left enough seam allowance. I'm gonna to try to not sew it close because I think it'd be cool for him to have a pocket for him to put something in anything. It better not be no love notes from no girls though cause he ain't got, no. Anyways, so yeah, I have to uh, start whoo, with the sewing. I think I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna use red thread. <laughs> I'll try to figure out what color thread, or maybe blue. I don't know what color thread yet. So, yeah. But to make it really easy on myself, I just use a ruler. And this way, I know that for the most part, all the squares will be the right size. I didn't worry about which way anything was running. And I also am not going to really worry about if the, um, the points match up too much because I can't be. This is, I want it to be used. I want it to be loved. I'm not going to send it out to do the quilting. I'm going to do the quilting myself. Yeah. We don't have a lot of space in this house, and I love it that way. <laughs> so, for my my sewing room is our dining room that isn't used. It's the red room because it's red. So, um, I have uh, the big dining room table, which is good because I can have my sewing, um, my sewing machine, my cutting mat, and my makeshift ironing um, board all on the table at the same time. So this is where I am, right? So when you walk into the house, you see this. You will see. <laughs> you, you will see this. So, and the good thing about this design wall too is because when you can get perspective. You can leave stuff up. You can put something on the board, walk away from it, come back to it, see if it, you like it. We have um, stairs in our home, so we can climb on the stairs and I can look at it from various angles to see if something is working or what's not working and then make do or make changes. So that's the good thing about a design wall. So for the back of Nick's quilt, I'm just going to use some flannel and these are my husband picked this out because he said this is so Nick's colors and it is and this is um these are almost all the colors that are well they are the colors that are in his room so this is going to match perfectly my husband surprised me with the trip down to the fabric district in downtown LA and I could have lost my mind but I didn't I kept it I had to remember what I wanted and that's what I got 
So I got three yards and this thing, this, this is huge. This is a lot of fabric. And I got three yards of this for no more than $9. It is unreal, right? So for Jason, I want to do Jason a quilt too. But the thing about Jason, and this is knowing your children and are knowing who you're going to give your craft to, your knitting, your crocheting, or your quilting or sewing, you have to know about the recipient, right? So Jason does not, he appreciates handmade items but he really doesn't appreciate them enough to where I feel like I have to go out my way and chop up squares and everything <laughs> he just doesn't he doesn't take care of them like Nick takes care of his stuff so as a matter of fact the uh the quilt not the, yeah, the, the crochet blanket that I made for him out of the swap squares, it's in my room now. And I don't even know if he knows because it was found on his floor. So I'm not going to go out of my way to make him something. And I know that he's not going to take proper care of it. But I'm not going to not make him anything too. So what I did was I bought him three yards of fabric. And so it's this fabric. And these, it's, it's, they're beautiful. It's just like two different color grays and some red, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make him a twin size blanket, but I'm gonna tie his quilt, as in use yarn and like the old fashioned ties and I think it's gonna look great. I'm gonna use, this is the top, I'm gonna use some muslin as the backing and I'm gonna, I, prob I will probably use polyester in the, in the middle of the quilt sandwich as the batting. And I'm gonna, use various colors of various color yarn that matches this and I think it's going to look great so you guys um, I'm looking forward to that but first I really want to get started on this because I think the hardest part of this quilt because I don't think I'm going to tie it I think I'm going to really machine quilt it is going to be the machine quilting so that's enough about quilting <laughs> and yeah that's everything that I have been doing for the most part um as far as a positive thought <laughs> of the podcast, I'm on Pinterest and I, Pinterest, I have a friend, my good friend, Teresa, she discovered Pinterest and she's gone crazy, right? And the other day she pinned a saying and the saying was, you can be the sweetest, juiciest, most beautiful peach in the world and there's always going to be someone who hates peaches. And I thought that was just great because you can be the best you, best person, nice, nicest, sweetest person with the best intentions. And this really, you guys, I'm talking to myself about this too because this happened. Um, with the best intentions and the best heart and people, there's always going to be someone for some reason that just does not like you. And you know what? That is okay because one monkey don't stop no show. <laughs> Okay, that's all for this episode. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging there with me um, and with all the get the ups and the downs, literally. And um, thank you for uh, watching. And I hope you guys have the best this week. Knitting, crocheting, sewing, quilting, embroidering, doing whatever makes your heart happy. And I hope you join me here next time in my house where I'll be positively knitting.